Hi Trillium Truthers, it's Jessica here and I know it's been quite a while. It's been probably several months. I think the last word or the last video was October and it's December <laughs> already. And today it's actually December the 21st. It's a Wednesday. Um, and it's all good news because I do have a word to share with you. Um, so thank you to those for checking in on me on the Telegram channel. I am doing um, well. I'm perfectly fine. I was kind of um, radio silent there for a little bit because of uh, just balancing um, schooling and my part-time job, which I mean it's part-time but it's 20 hours a week and then if you factor in being full-time um, in school it's uh, it can be a little demanding <laughs> um, but it's all good so that's kind of what um, had my focus there for a little while uh, so this is currently um, I'm in the graphics design program at Humber College here in Ontario um, I do have previous education but decided to go back to school uh, just to kind of retool myself just because uh, you know it was a great suggestion by my husband and just felt like uh, that was kind of what the Lord wanted me to get into so um, I'm in my final year and come January this will be my final semester so once that's all over um, it'll be kind of more just regular working hours um, yeah because it's just been a little <laughs> a little busy because uh, you go to work and then at night I do school projects so it's great um, but no it's fine uh, so that's kind of what took up um, most of my time and focus and um, so I'm fine everything's okay I just had to uh, with it being the final year projects are a little heftier um, things are a little more demanding because they're trying to get uh, students ready um, for you know the workforce and you have to have a portfolio and you have to have all this kind of design artwork stuff ready um, so it's a little more demanding and then too it was a little more confusing with them deciding to switch to a hybrid method so it's in person and online and it's just been way more confusing than, the, than when we were just simply online for the first two years. Um, I kind of enjoyed it because I could stay home, keep things in order here, work on stuff. Um, I didn't mind it at all. I enjoy working <laughs> by myself. I don't mind uh, being by myself because um, you're technically never alone. But it's just been a little more confusing because you have yeah, like you'll have teachers saying that, oh, we'll meet tomorrow in class. Oh, no, we'll not meet tomorrow in class. And it's not just me. I know the other students found it really um, confusing, more frustrating. So, yeah, the school system needs an overhaul because it's just, it's just, this is, it's crazy. <laughs> I think you either have it one way or the other. You're either online or in person. Uh, this whole hybrid thing is just way too confusing. Anyways, enough of that. Um, so I, so once the term ended, I got everything submitted. I had a few days to finally unwind and get quiet. <laughs> um, and fortunately on December the 19th, which was this past Monday, um, I had a wonderful time just sitting on my couch, spending time with the Lord, catching up, um, being in prayer, reiterating things. And he's so good and gracious to kind of um, share his plans for Canada to also just kind of bolster up hope and reiterate things. So I'm going to pray and then I'm going to read this word just like I always do. And once again, um, if you are new to this channel, uh, my name's Jessica. I <laughs> I get words of uh, words from the Lord uh, regarding mainly Canada. It's usually always just about Canada, um, which makes sense because uh, you know being Canadian and all. Um, and um, you're more than welcome to. Uh, we have a Telegram 
channel. So if you want to get kind of updates uh, quicker, like if there's a video up or if there's um, a blog post up, I usually let people know on the Telegram channel. It's also a great place to commune with other um, believers as well. Uh, or if you have questions, I'm on there. Uh, usually you'll see me messaging people or just answering questions. Uh, a lot of people like to share prayers or they have prayer requests. Uh, a few people have shared prophetic dreams, which I always find uh, really interesting. Um, so yeah, so all those links, we have a link to a blog website, which these prophetic words are typed up and they're posted on that site. So if you want to copy paste them or you want to print them off, if you're like me and you like reading, as opposed to just hearing someone re uh, say it to you, um, I'm better when I can actually read it. I retain the information better if I see it. Um, so that blog link is in the description below. And then we also have the Telegram chat, which if you click that link, I think it'll take you to Telegram's app and you can just uh, sign into that, that group um, and be a part of that and get kind of updates. Um, and then I think that's everything. Okay, all right, let's pray. And then I'll read this, and then maybe we'll just kind of go over any uh, to clarify things. Okay. Heavenly Father, we just thank you for this day that you have made. And Father, we just welcome you here in our homes, in, in, uh, <laughs> in my home, but also uh, those listening to um, this video, this message. Lord, we welcome your presence. We welcome Holy Spirit, and we just invite Lord Jesus as well. We open ourselves to heaven's atmosphere. We thank you, Father, that through Jesus you have made a way. We thank you that we fight from a place of victory. We thank you that you have overcome. And we just thank you that despite all the issues going on in the world, that there's nothing new under the sun, Father, but you've got it all. You have foreseen it. You know it all. And we thank you, Lord, that we are your covenant children, your children that have been bought and paid for under the blood, the precious blood of Jesus. And we just thank you that not only are we protected, but we are guaranteed your promises. We're guaranteed protection. We're guaranteed supply. And most of all, we're guaranteed freedom from any kind of guilt or condemnation or sin. We just thank you for that. And Father, we just thank you for the following word that's been given. And Lord, I just submit myself to you, to your promptings. I open myself to Holy Spirit's leadings. And Father, I just pray and give over uh, this tongue and this mouth to you. Let every word that comes out of it uh, be with pinpoint accuracy. Everything that you have declared, everything that you have intended, not what I think, not what I want it to say, but exactly what you have um, ordained it to say. And so we just thank you for that, Father. We thank you for joining us together this holiday season as we celebrate the birth of Jesus. We thank you for Emmanuel uh, coming to this earth, coming uh, to, to die. Um, and we just thank you that, 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 um, that he did so, that he was so willing to do so uh, because you loved us, because he loved you. And he saw the victory, and we just thank you for that that through this precious gift of this child who uh, knew no sin, um, that we are made free, that we are blessed, that, and, and we just thank you for that, and we just celebrate you uh, this Christmas season. We keep the Christ in Christmas, and we just thank you for bringing together families, family relationships, and we just also just... Um, speak a special word over your people this time of year we just pray father that during this christmas season when they're having their dinners when they're meeting friends and family or if they're just staying at home father we just pray that you're there we ask father and invite you to celebrate with us we ask for joy and your perfect peace to just flow and overwhelm people's hearts and their homes we thank you, Father, for restoring broken relationships with families that have been damaged over the past several years um, through different means, whether it's offense, whether it's division or strife. 
We just thank you for breaking down barriers and walls. We thank you for tearing down such um, divisions. Um, and we just open ourselves to your love and your grace. We thank you for bringing the prodigal sons home. We thank you for bringing um, families together safely, to, um, you know, especially with, with weather, Lord. We just thank you for safe travels for everybody. And we just pray a special warmth and refreshing this season that as people are on their holidays father that we're reflecting not just on you but we're just resting in you we're taking a break from the everyday from all the news from all the stuff going on and all the pressures around us and we're taking this and we're resting in you and we just thank you that come this new year lord we just thank you that we're going to be um energized refilled refreshed and <laughs> and full of turkey and good food and lord we just thank you and we just speak that over your people we release that anointing on your on our, our brothers and sisters but on your children father and we just thank you that this will be the best christmas that they've celebrated we thank you father for taking us to new heights um, for exalting us for putting us above uh, in Jesus' name, and we just thank you, uh, and also declare and speak over people's finances, over their um, job situations, we speak over their um, food and the dinners that are going to be having, and Lord, uh, we just also speak over their gas tanks, and we just pray a special measure and blessing, Lord, that um, that there'll be more than enough food, there'll be more than enough gas, that you're going to get them, uh, you're going to extend those things for them, you're going to bless them, um, and we just thank you that, um, that there's going to be no worries, no anxieties, Father. Um, though the feelings and the thoughts come, we just thank you that Jesus paid it all, Jesus carried it all. And so we just rest in you and we just thank you, Father, for sitting with us, for being with us in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Okay. I know that was a long prayer, but I think it's okay because you just let Holy Spirit do it. Okay. Here we go. So this word is uh, titled The Big Squeeze. Um, and once again, I received it on Monday, December 19th of the year 2022 at 3.07 p.m. Now that's important because it was funny um, when I was about to kind of write this all down, the Lord had me go to Philippians 3.7. So you have your 3.07, the time, um, and then he had me turn to Philippians 3.7. So... I'm just going to read that verse. So, but whatever former things I had thought that might have been gains to me, I have come to consider as one combined loss for Christ's sake. Now we'll come back to that and I'll read that kind of whole chapter to put it in context. But here we go. To the people of the great white north, why are thou cast down? Why are thy souls in despair and grief? A cloud hangs heavy over the people, and this is just the general people of Canada, um, which is different from God's children, people. And it rails against them, raining hail and storms of contempt, offense, and condemnation. The people groan and gripe and complain. They say on their lips, it is the best of times. It is the worst of times. I know their hearts. And out of the smoking embers are bellows of dark black smoke. A smoke that wafts up with a putrid fragrance. It is of their own making. They fuel the fires adding heap upon heap of licentious debauchery. The minions and underlings fanning the flames trying to waft the evil haze across this nation. But it shall not yield. It will not ignite. For in their arrogance and pride, they assume the people slumber. They assume that in the smoke, which is dark, heavy, and oppressive, that the people will submit. But I, the Lord your God, Adonai, say, it will not prosper. My people of Canada, I bring you tidings of great joy. 
I ask you to remember your God. Remember who I am. I say to you, people of Canada, harden not your hearts. I have heard the cries of my people. I know the cloud is thick and heavy. I know they try to spread it. And I know Pharaoh steals from the people unrighteously and launders it to other nations. Do you not know that I, Jehovah, am an excellent bookkeeper? I have counted documented and have records of every cent. I track the hours and times. I know the true times and wages of these punch cards. Do not think that I, the Father of Light, does not care, for my heart is heavy laden with the troubles of my children. I hate and find detestable thieving, for it produces nothing and capitalizes on the innocent and earnest. I know Canada um, that thieves are afoot and they connive and plot in dens of darkness. How does one catch a thief? You simply do nothing, for they have set a trap for themselves of their own making. They plot, they may plot, plan, sneer, and connive all they want, but I am an excellent bookkeeper and I will not tolerate such evil schemes and scams in my nation. There is coming a time when men and women of renown shall fall. Their hands that pilfer many jars shall bear witness against them. The crumbs and residue of their actions shall call them out and the evidence even in an unrighteous court shall be irrefutable. For we are entering a season, a season of great joy, victory, and a time abounding in great love and providence. The spirits have gone out before, those trying to light these embers of debauchery. They convince men to fan the flames, but it will yield nothing. For the spirit, the great spirit, has blown through, and the heavy cloud that weighs upon this nation shall clear. The dust shall settle, and the ashes piled as high as mountains will be blown away. For this nation shall be purged with fire, but be reborn out of snow, white, pure snow that waters the soil. Do not let the coolness of winter fool you, Canada, for things are heating up in a new way. The pots have boiled over and the thieving hands have been scalded by the heat. They retreat back to lick their wounds and return with a prideful vengeance against the people. Oh, sure, they squeeze, push, and pilfer. They say to themselves, we shall increase and they shall decrease. But the time has come for the big squeeze to be upon them. For I... <clears throat> For I am taking on Wall Street and all those so-called tycoons of the finance world. I am seating myself at their little game table. I shall challenge them to an arm wrestle. And in their haughty fool foolishness, they will latch onto my hand in an effort to topple my kingdom. But I will squeeze. I shall not be moved. I will squeeze harder and harder until their fingers collapse on themselves. You will hear crunching and the breaking of brittle bones. I will wrench their arms down, slam it against their table, and one by one they will cry out. Yet another will still come up to challenge me, only to meet the same fate, until the table cannot withstand the impact and so gives way. Their deck of cards that has been loaded in their favor shall fly. The chips of betting on human life shall be scattered. And the biggest, most stable, too big to fail, shall crumble beneath the weight of my righteous arm. They will know what it is to fear the God whom they so despise. Others shall tremble and repent, but many will still continue to try and spit in my eye as they fall into the depths of their own carnality. I know the games they play, like little moles that continuously pop up only to hide in their burrows. They dig deep thinking no one will see, no one will know where we funnel and tunnel the money. 
While some have tried to take a whack at these moles with a hammer, I shall flood them out with water. A rainy season fast approaches and it shall pour over this nation, flooding every nook and cranny. These moles with all their tunnels and their grandiose plans will be swept away. Not one dark nook shall be left standing. I say to my people, my children, do not lose hope. I know many are battle-worn. There is division among the camps, gossiping, backbiting, and judgment within the troops. Many try to battle on their own and are overwhelmed. Others spurn their brothers and sisters, and many simply tire of waiting, waiting to come out of hiding, waiting for the darkness to leave and the clouds to dissipate. I never gave orders to wait away the evil. I gave orders to go into all the world and preach the gospel, and in my name you shall drive out demons, speak new tongues, pick up snakes with your hands, drink deadly poison, but it shall not harm you, and yes, lay your hands on the sick and watch them recover. And that's a verse from Mark 16, 17 to 18. You are my glorious church. I have given you everything and you will need I have given you everything you will need and so much more. I have made you the head and not the tail. I have set you on high uh, when you were low. I have wiped away every tear and carried every darkness. Jesus, Yeshua, the salvation of the Lord has paid it all. Those who have gone uh, who have grown weary, come and rest on my lap. Those who are burdened and tormented by the cares of this world, lay your head on my chest. Get quiet and listen. Listen to the sound of my heart. It beats strong and loud for you. My heart beats and pulses for you. My little ones, do not be anxious or weary of the world. There is nothing new under the sun. And Papa God is with you. I have not forsaken this nation. <clears throat> I have not left you orphans or fatherless. I have not sabotaged or neglected you. I have stepped down onto this earth for you. I yearn for my children and my heart is moved by their petitions of their hearts. I know their desires. I hear the hopes and dreams of their hearts. I care for you. I am moved by you. Sweet, little, innocent children, step into my presence. Be wrapped in my light and do not forget that I have the last word. Look out at the wild geese that stay on in winter. They are neither dismayed by the snow when it falls. They do not squawk when the cold comes. Instead, they soar above the wind beneath their wings. I too shall blow a wind beneath your wings, Canada, for I know that, that I know things may seem bare and that there is not enough. The cold bleakness of winter has come, but like wild geese, I shall provide for you. For the geese are always fed. They never toil or worry. Instead, they soar above. I shall make you soar above Canada. Listen, listen carefully because just as the geese soar by, just as the geese soar by and honk in the distance, there is coming a return, a return of the honkers for the sound has, reso has resounded across the land and it is time for the echo to return back twice as loud. A new sound to an old tune shall resound back across this land. It will echo louder and louder and shake the deaf and the dumb awake. For I say to the sleeping man, awake, your slumber is over and the ancient war drums will beat once again over this land. I am calling together the elders I am bringing together my first people. I shall commune with them. I shall anoint them with healing oil and water. Let the ancient embers of the great spirit ignite these people once again, for I am calling them out of the land. 
for I am calling them out of Goshen into the promised land, a land flowing with milk and honey, and they shall prosper once again. Let me be your chief once again, and I will root out the corruption that has seeped in your tribes. I know men and women within your ranks have put paychecks and kickbacks before the people, but I shall kick them out and they shall not be backed. It is time for the young ones, the little ones, to come around me. Do not shoo them away, for I am opening a door. I am opening a season and time for the little ones to draw close to me. The years of hurt, abuse, psychological programming, and enslavement ends here. I have drawn a line in the sand and the perversion, invasion, and callousness ends now. The children they sought to abuse and brainwash, I am opening a door of opportunity and encounter. The evil one will not know what to do, for I have packed my backpack. I am bringing my sandwich and juice box, and I am coming to the schools. Oh yes, look out. I am coming into the schools, and Holy Spirit is going to make a show of their drag shows, which are a total drag. We will drag out what was orchestrated. We will usurp and dismantle these so-called queens. I am taking this mountain and shaking it to the core. Let's turn up the dial and watch as Jezebel's last offense backfires in her face. She sought the children for her temple slaves, but I will not allow such evil to prevail. I have exposed their plans. I have revealed to the parents, and now the gloves are off. I am opening the door. Uh, whoops. I am opening the door and the little ones will encounter me. The spirit will move upon the children for I have called on the adults and there were none to be found. So I will move on the children. I will show them my kingdom. They will know grace and they will call on my name. I am breaking down this pedagogy and sham of an education system. I am ripping it apart, dividing it in two, right down the middle. Watch as the predators become the prey, and they too will know my glory. For this I say to you, O Canada, do not lose hope. I have not forsaken or abandoned you. I am here for you. Your nation is not lost. Although the shadow of a dragon has been cast from east to west, my light will prevail and has shone, so the shadow. So, shadow, where is your darkness? Death, where is your sting? Has not the enemy lost, and you, my people of the great white north, won? You are victors of a battle that has already been won for you. So I say to you, love has been shed abroad in your hearts. Remember my promises. Know that I am a covenant God, and I keep my word. Shalom and peace be unto you, my children. Amen. Okay. Oh, just give me a second, guys. <laughs> I, oh, excuse me. Um, okay. I'm just going to go over this quickly uh, to point out or just explain a few spots that I think people might have questions about. So, in that first paragraph, it says to the people of the great white north, why are thou cast down? Why are thy souls in despair and grief? Um, this, how it's phrased, really reminds me of David. I think it's in Psalms. And it's interesting because he's always, uh, I think in that book, he kind of, has a conversation with himself where he says, soul, why are thou cast down? Or why are you in grief? And it's just, it goes through kind of how David's uh, emotions, the way he's processing things, because he had a lot going on, same thing as what we're going through. Um, and eventually, always at the end of those chapters, the joy of the Lord would always see him through. He would always snap out of it. It was always... That's why I love those books, because you get to see um, just human, <laughs> uh, David's 
humanity, even as a great king, even knowing and having a relationship with God, he still had feelings of doubt. He still went through depression. He had um, all kinds of uh, thoughts and feelings, but yet he would always go back to the word of the Lord, what God promised him. He would always um, reflect on that and make a 180. So it's, it's kind of a, a pointer to that. And then it goes on to say uh, that the people, just the general Canadian people, they say on their lips, it is the best of times, it is the worst of times. This um, is a quote from Charles Dickens' A Tale of Two Cities. It's one of his uh, most famous lines, and that's how the book opens. And if you actually read that line, I can actually read it to you. Um, they're famous words, but it's kind of the same time as what we're going through. A Tale of Two Cities, opening paragraph. Um, let's see here. Do, do, do. So he writes in that book, it was the best of times, it was the worst of times. It was the age of wisdom. It was the age of foolishness. It was the epoch of belief. It was the epoch of, incred <laughs> of incredulity. It was the season of light. It was the season of darkness. It was the spring of hope. It was the winter of despair. We had everything before us. We had nothing before us. We were all going <laughs> direct to heaven. We were all going direct the other way, in short. The period was so far like the present period and that some of its noisiest authorities insisted on its being received for good or for evil in the, <laughs> in the superlative degree of comparison only. So there's a little snippet of that, which I think is always funny when um, Holy Spirit brings kind of old literature back into things um but same could be said for what we're seeing here charles dickens writes this book i think it was in i want to say 1893 i could be wrong and he's saying and seeing these things um and it's still relevant to today right i mean you know depending on on your outlook okay and then it goes on to say that jehovah's an excellent bookkeeper he's uh, counted and documented all the records every cent. So if you, <laughs> so you, his children do not need to worry because he is very good at keeping track of things and everybody will get their just reward. Now, hmm, a lot of what's been said is kind of reiterating past words. He talks about the big squeeze, uh, taking on the financial world which has already been shaking. Um, he encourages his people, the glorious church, those that are battle-worn. Ah, yes. Um, spending time with him uh, is of the is of most importance, I would say, now, um, especially with everything going on. I mean, if you're feeling pressured by everything that's going on, um, whether it's just the concerns of this world, the high inflation, gas prices, how will we pay for our home, um, my kids going to these crazy schools and all this stuff being exposed. Um, it's like he said, it's like you need to rest in me, listen to, um, and the way he puts it, listen to the sound of my heart, which beats for you. Um, you have to get pretty quiet and pretty close to somebody to be able to listen to their heartbeat. And that's kind of what he's asking um, and has always wanted. He, he always has wanted relationship and that bond with his kids. So, I mean, um, get close to the father, get quiet um, and he'll show you, he'll show up. Um, it's amazing uh, what he is doing in people's lives. Okay, he talks about I know there's going to probably be a few comments about this, um, about the wild geese and kind of, um, if you're ever just kind of sitting at home, it happens to me, they'll fly by and you can always hear them honk, honk, going by. Um, and he's calling a return of the honkers. Now, I really don't know what that's going to look like. I have a feeling it has something to do 
with the convoy um, because the sound has already gone out. That sound of freedom, the patriotism, the love for one's country and getting God back into Canada, which he is here. Um, but the way he phrases it and the way, I don't know, we'll have to see how it goes because the way God plans things, it's totally different from the way we try to orchestrate stuff. So let's just be aware and open to whatever he wants to do. But I, I, we are not done with that, um, with God's, uh, <laughs> God's convoy. Um, and it's gonna resound kind of like an echo, right? So the it's already went out, now we're just waiting for it to come back twice as loud. Um, I'm, it'll be interesting to see what happens during the anniversary, which is coming up uh, here in January. So we'll see. Uh, it's best just to just keep an open mind, because there's what I think should happen, and then there's what God's gonna do, and it's totally different. <laughs> Blows things out of the water. Okay, and then he goes on to talk to his uh, the First Nations people, which he just calls his first people. Um, and that he's going to root out evil and um, systematic corruption. Um, he's calling on them um, to... He's bringing healing. He's bringing his spirit. He's bringing them out of Goshen into the Promised Land which I think is interesting. And then this is where, okay, um, the little ones, him getting into the schools. He says here, for I have packed my backpack, I am bringing my sandwich and juice box. Just to clarify, um, that's the communion right there. Any Anytime he's going into an area, he's always bringing the sacrifice, the body of Jesus and his blood, that covenant, that promise, that fulfillment, um, he's bringing it. And I love how he puts it in just kind of little kids terms. You can just picture a little tiny backpack in those little kindergarten classrooms and he's bringing the bread and the wine or the sandwich and the juice box. <laughs> he knows no bounds. Um, so obviously there's going to be some kind of a breakthrough where kids are going to just know know the grace know who the father is know what that means uh, participate in it uh, we got a backfire of jezebel's plans they she's not getting her hands on the little ones so do not worry and then i think that's all the points yep i think so and then he goes on to finish it. Um, okay. All right. I think that's everything. And then Philippians 3, 7. Oh, yes. I'll just quickly read that chapter in case anybody just wants, you know, if you don't want to get your Bible out, but you probably should. Um, so chapter 3, I'm just going to read it so that we get it in context. So here Paul writes, for the rest, my brethren, delight yourselves in the Lord and continue to rejoice that you are in him to keep writing to you over and over of the same things it is not irksome to me, and it is a precaution for your safety. Look out for those dogs, Judaizers, legalists. Look out for those mischief makers. Look out for those who mutilate the flesh. For we are the true circumcision who worship God in spirit and by the spirit of God and exalting glory and pride ourselves in Jesus Christ and put no confidence or dependence on what we are in the flesh and on outward privileges and physical advantages and external appearances. Though for myself I have at least grounds to rely on the flesh. If any other man considers that he has or seems to have reason to rely on the flesh and his physical and outward advantages, I still have more. Circumcised when I was eight days old of the race of Israel, of the tribe of Benjamin, a Hebrew and the son of Hebrews, as the observance of the law, I was of the party of the Pharisees. As to my zeal, I was a persecutor of the church, and by the law's standard of righteousness, which is supposed justice, uprightness, and right standing with God, I was proven to be blameless, and no fault was found in me. 
So here Paul just kind of reiterates how it's like, okay, if you're going to boast of yourself and of your own flesh and of your own works, which is kind of, which is religion, man's attempt to have a relationship with God, which is still very distant. Um, it's, uh, he's saying that it's like, well, I was, I was blameless. I was spotless. I followed the law to a T. You couldn't like, you couldn't have met a guy that was more religiously following the law than Paul. Um, and then he goes on to say, and this is chapter three, verse seven, the one that the Lord gave kind of at the beginning, he says, but whatever former things I had that might have been gains to me. So all of that law following all of that abiding by what he thought gave him righteousness and so on. I have come to consider as one combined loss for Christ's sake, yes. Furthermore, I count everything as a loss compared to the possession of the priceless privilege, the overwhelming preciousness, the surpassing worth and supreme advantage of knowing Christ Jesus as my Lord and of progressively becoming more deeply and intimately acquainted with him, of perceiving and recognizing and understanding him more fully and clearly, for his sake, I have lost everything and consider it all to be mere rubbish, refuse dregs, in order that I may win, gain Christ, the anointed one. Isn't, I, you can't put it better than that. Oh, wow. Okay, so just wanted to read that in context, which, I mean, if you consider what we consider worth, you know, something precious and worthy. It's not, not when you compare it to what Jesus has done and making him your Lord and Savior. So I just think that's um, something to just remember, be reminded of. It's always good to feed on God's word. But I just wanted to read that because he gave that at the beginning. And I'm, uh, and with everything going on, I know Canada seems like it's in a big pickle. But honestly, it's, it's nothing when you compare it to what Christ has done and what he has purchased for you and, and what he has done for you and what he's planning to do in the future here. Canada's not lost. It's, um, it's just getting a purging. <laughs> okay. I think that's everything to cover. Thanks, guys, for uh, once again listening. Um, I'm sure there'll be more to come and if not, um, have a Merry Christmas. I, um, praying you guys have a wonderful holiday season and a great new year. We're going to be celebrating a wonderful new year. And I know it's feels like it's been a long time. It's been years. People are still waiting for their jobs. Uh, there's lots going on, but just like the Lord said, it's like, rest your head on my chest take time with me. It's going to be okay. And I just want to say that to everybody because I think there's, um, I think it just needs to be said that God cares for you, that he loves you, that everything is going to be okay. I know there's a lot going on. I know the thoughts and the feelings are real. However, they do not exalt themselves above the word of God, which has just told us not only in the written word, the Bible, but also just even prophetically He's got this. He cares. He hasn't abandoned. He hasn't sabotaged. He hasn't ruined anything. That's not the way he works. He is absolutely good. And he is working all of this out. And he's, as he says, he's an excellent bookkeeper. He's keeping track. So don't worry. You don't have to keep track. You don't have to worry. He's got this. Okay. All right. So once again, Merry Christmas, everybody. Have a happy new year. Unless I'm on before then, we don't know. We'll see. Um, and just have a wonderful holiday and, and, um, and God bless. So have a great day. Bye.